Shalom brothers, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. I want to say double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you brothers out there, the elect. And um, I just want to say to all the brothers for all the positive see feedback from the last uh, segment. Um, I'm glad it edified and I got tons of messages and, and uh, you know, positive response from brothers and, you know, the consensus is going to more detail and more stuff. Um, before I jump into this topic of herbs and um, fatty acids, a few things I want to say about the last video. I put a little disclaimer on it saying that, you know, each of us have different body types. So you have like protein type, carb type, and a mixture of both. Um, so if the ketogenic diet is not for you and you're eating too much meat and you're kind of, you, you know, you're kind of feeling sick about it, um, you know, you could incorporate more carbs. And when I say carbs, I mean greens. I'm not talking about processed sugar and fucking sugar cookies and Oreos and stuff like that. I'm talking about carbohydrates from, you know, fruits and, and vegetables, of course, you know. Um, me and myself, I, I feel I'm mixed, man. The way I do it, you know, there's, I guess there's a uh, different science behind it. Like you got guys like Dr. Mer Mercola that'll tell you how to do it. But me, I do it for what I'm craving for. So when I'm in my uh, fasting state, I, my body, like I just feel for um, tuna and cilantro, you know? So that's why I feel like I'm, I'm a mixture of both. Um, but, but first, I'm, you know, um, getting back to the topic at hand, um, I want to get into some of the different herbs, like just common herbs that you could find in urban environments and, and and different areas that could do a tremendous amount for you. Um, scripture I want to uh, bring out real quick is uh, Genesis, uh, the first chapter, and the 29th verse. And the Most High said, "Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, so like it, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed." To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was. So, um, all right, so let's get into some of the herbs. Um, the first one I definitely want to recommend is uh, something called turmeric. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to put that on, a, you know, you'll see it in the post-production. Uh, turmeric, um, and the thing about turmeric is it has something they call cucumin, which um, you know it's, it's also used in curry powder. It's what make curry powder yellow, and this is this was one of the top herbs for me because one, it's you know totally um, anti-inflammatory, but also um, it repairs neurological functions in your brain. Like if you have bad memory or you have trouble sleeping, cucumin will do that. It will, it will fix it, but it's not very bioavailable. So. The, the thing is, if you just sprinkle it upon your food, just the, the spice itself, you're not gonna really reap the benefits. What you have to do is combine that with black pepper because black pepper has something to call pepperine and the pepperine will increase the uh, bioavailability of turmeric by 2000%. So it's like, it has to go pretty much hand in hand. So that's one of the first herbs I'll recommend. Um, another herb, dark chocolate. So if you're on this keto, and when I say dark chocolate, I'm not talking about that shit you get, you know, at, at like, you know, like dark Hershey's chocolate. I'm talking about raw cacao, dark chocolate. It's really bitter, and what makes it bit bitter is those flavonoids. And flavonoids kind of work like antioxidants. And um, it's just a great herb. It has more antioxidants than blueberries, right? And real quickly, like, like let me just explain what antioxidant is, because I, I noticed I said it a lot in the last segment, and I didn't really ex explain it. So um, the way it works is this. Um, and, um, matter of fact, let me let me hold off for now. When I get into the omega, um, the omega three, sixes, and nines, and different fatty acids, I'll jump around back to um, antioxidants. Uh, the next thing I'll say to get is coconut oil. Coconut oil, I have, I have it. And brothers, coconut oil is like like almost like a super everything because you can use the coconut flesh. Um, this is what I do when I when um, my window open, my my eight hour window of eating. I like to open it by grazing, and I graze on um, coconut flakes, which um, has something called MCT. MCT is medium chain triglycerides, like shorty chain, like fats is like different chains, you know. But MCT is like a short chain of fat, meaning your body can use that energy right away. Like, cause you know, I don't really use carbs for energy anymore. I use primarily fats, and MC and it's loaded with MCT. It's loaded with saturated fat as well. And Esau try to make it look like sat. Look, trans fat is terrible, but saturated fat is not bad at all. So, listen, mayonnaise is fine. Saturated fats are not bad, you know what I'm saying? Um, Actually, it's kind of good to actually build up your cholesterol because touching back on that in the last thing, all right, so cholesterol is like, it's like um, if a building is burning down, you got the firemen, right? Now, just because the building is burning down, the firemen didn't start it. They're just there to stop the fire. That's kind of how like cholesterol works. When there's a rupture in your artery, cholesterol comes and clogs it up in the plaque to, you know, 
to um you know kind of inflame it and, and stop the uh the, the, the tear in the, in the um tissue you know that that's how um cholesterol works that's why your body produces its own um and you know this whole shit about high cholesterol and, and lower your risk of heart that's Esau using this bullshit to push something called statin drugs with statin drugs it's a whole nother topic in itself but um it, it it's, it's just totally to, 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 to um, fuck you up, you know what I mean? So, what else? Alright, so you have the turmeric, you have dark cacao, you have coconut oil. Also, coconut oil, it's better to cook with coconut oil than any other oil because, like, just let me briefly get into the oils. Like, olive oil, I'll recommend you stay away from because um, they like to push that thing with the uh, Mediterranean. Um, the Mediterraneans, they eat olive oil, which, okay, they did and it did help their age or whatever, but the reason it was helping them so much is because you have a fucking olive tree. When you when you look at oils, oils oxidize over a period of time. All right. Well, now we're gonna jump into uh, antioxidants. Um, antioxidants. Oils oxidize, and what does that mean? All right. So, oxidants. All right. Toxins. You have different toxins that you just can't avoid, like from cigarette smoke and and from and different stuff like that that cause oxidation. Oxidation is when you have a negative negatively charged oxygen molecule in your body you know and oxidative stress is what kills you you know slowly over periods of time so primary factor that are like toxins and different air pollutions but also oil um oil oxidizes because it's poly um polyunsaturated oil it oxidizes very easily as soon as you cook it or add air to it it oxidizes you know and the more you consume all these different oils in you the um um, you, you just uh, put an oxidative stress on your body, you know, so that's why you take antioxidants because stuff like blueberries and dark chocolate Anything antioxidants different flavonoids they add they basically balance out that uh, that negative ch negative charge uh, um, Oxygen um, and, and repair uh, cell tissues and, and, and repair your body So that's why it's good to take the antioxidants because you have to take them. It's just toxins everywhere, you know So get it into that. Yeah berries again cherries cranberries um Another herb you should con uh, consume or meat is I spoke last the last um in the last episode about um salmon right and I saw a comment by the elder Tahar he said eat wild Alaskan salmon he's absolutely right because I should have mentioned that like I already knew in my head of course it's only wild Alaskan if you can't find that you could use tuna you know um the reason he said stay away from different kinds of tuna is because they course it with eel what I do brothers honestly a lot of times well all the time I just put up a prayer I feel like when I put up a prayer on anything. The most I would just kind of just give it like an extra spiritual watch so it doesn't really fuck me up too much, you know? And that's what I believe, you know? I have faith in that. I have faith in the prayer that the Lord will, will, will wash it, you know? But yeah, I buy wild Alaskan um, tuna as well. Uh, wild Alaskan salmon, I'm sorry. And the reason you want wild Alaskan, again, it, it, it has a better source of something called EPA and DHA, all right? Now let's get into fatty acids a little bit. And then I, you know, I'll jump around back to different herbs. The reason I want you brothers to, when you're on this ketogenic diet to really eat mostly fish is because fish is loaded with EPA, DHA, um, which is uh, omega-3. So with omega-3s, you have three. You have ALA, um, you have EPA, and you have DHA. These are um, differentiated by carbon bonds. Like So ALA is a uh, 18-carbon bond, and you have EPA, which is a uh, 20-carbon bond, and you have DHA, which is a very, very important omega-3 fatty acid which is uh 22 carbon bonds and this is only found in 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 dark i'm sorry not dark cold water fishes you know and cold water mammals and stuff like that like you a lot of edomites will take like fish oil to get this or they say krill oil but we can't have krill oil because krill oil is un unlawful you know you ever seen a krill it's, you can't eat that so i would recommend you get it from um a salmon or or tuna because those things are rich in those, those omega-3 uh fatty acids and the thing with epa and dha is like food for your brain you got to remember that your brain burns about 600 calories so um a day and you need to give it uh fuel and, and, and food and D dha and um and epa those those are uh, repair brain tissue because think about it you've been on this carb uh carb uh carb-based diet pretty much your entire life and um your brain could de develop um insulin resistant as well because insulin resistance could happen to any organ in the body matter of fact they're saying like alzheimer's and dementia is pretty much insulin resistant of the brain because if the brain has to worry about regulating insulin it has an enzyme right that regulates insulin but it has another enzyme 
I mean, the same enzyme has another function to, re to regulate brain plaque. So if it's focused so much on the, the insulin, you're gonna have all this plaque build up in your brain and that's what, you know, causes bad memory and, 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 and just pretty much fucks up your brain. So that's a, a total other reason to, to stay away from carbohydrates. Um, so, all right, so you know how to get EPA and DHA from, you know, cold water, so like, so fish, mackerel, um, airing, um, you know, lawful fishes cold water fishes they'll give you this and um to get your ala right you can get ala from nuts and seeds like olive oil will have um i believe omega-6 right and and that's omega-6 is a key as well the thing the thing with the thing with the human um body is it needs a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 but the problem with the standard american diet is it has way too much omega-6 to the point it's almost toxic you know what i mean so for example, I think the ratio in uh, Western America is 16 to 1 or 15 to 1, when the ratio should really be 1 to 1 or best 5 to 1 of um, omega 6 to 3. You know, it should be an equal balance of that. But since with the animals are being fed grains and, 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 and all these different oil, canola oil, all these different oils, you're over consuming on um, omega 6, you know, and not getting enough omega 3s. And not only that, the omega 6 is oxidizing and putting an oxidative stress on your body. So I don't really deal with olive oil as much. I, I just get my omega-6 from raw nuts and seeds, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and omega-3s as well. So you could get all uh, walnut, Brazilian nuts, um, will have omega-3s in them. Um, the, 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 the omega-3 that they have is called ALA, um, you know, which is, you know, like nuts and, seed, and, and seeds and stuff like that. Flax seeds is pretty good because flax seeds also um, is omega-3. Um, yeah, it's omega-3 and the thing that's good about flaxseed is it's water soluble. So when you, when you eat flaxseed, you know, I have some too, what it does is it'll, it'll remove the estrogen from out of your body because we consume way too much estrogen and estrogen mimics. So that's another important herb to have is flax seeds. And, um, also, you know, sticking with the fat diet, those are good fats, you know, for some flax seeds and, and pumpkin seeds and, um, what else? What else I got up there? I got pistachio, um... I got coconut flakes. Um, um, another way to get a good balance of omega-6 and omega-3 is eating some, something called grass-fed meat. Now, grass-fed beef or grass-fed cows, when they eat grass, the meat is different than a, a cow that's been grain-fed because like a grain-fed cow is just way blasted with omega-6, um, which is disruption to ratio. So um, when you get a grass-fed cow now, it has a perfect ratio of like pretty much like one to one or five to one. Basically it has omega-3s and omega-6 balance. You don't want too much omega-3s or omega-6s. You know, you want a, a perfect balance um, of omega-3s and omega-6. Um, a key note is this. Um, in the 1900s, um, I think the, uh, the population consumed like a pound of omega-6 a year. Now it's, uh, I think around 72 pounds the average American consume of omega-6 a year. So you're not, it's like, it's just oxidative stress killing us, you know? And um, omegas, omegas uh, three, six, and nine are part of something called the 90. There's 90 nutrition, uh, there's 90 different essential nutrients that the body needs. 60 of those is minerals, I think 12 of them. 16 is vitamins and um, 12 is amino acids. And then uh, three is um, uh, three is fatty acids, which is omega three, six, and nine. Um, another thing about, another thing about that is why I say consume Brazilian nuts is because yeah, you're going to have the omega three, but it's also loaded with something called selenium, you know, um, it's crazy. It's not, it's crazy how things work. Cause if you think about it, minerals, cause you need more minerals than anything, right? And minerals come from the earth. Um, that's why ESO sets up Monsanto. For example, you got something like calcium. Calcium doesn't come from cows. Calcium comes from the earth. You know, cows, plants can't produce minerals, you know? If that was true, then you know you, could, you fucking have a plant that could grow gold. It doesn't work like that. The earth produced the minerals, and then the bacteria digest the um, minerals, and the plants digest the bacteria, and the animal digests the plant, and you digest the animal. That's how it kind of works, like a cycle. So what Esau does with stuff like um, Monsanto and pesticides and stuff is he kills off that bacteria, so the bacteria can't really digest the minerals, and the plant can't get enough minerals. That's how come the food tastes like crap, you know, like ne like the food will taste like shit. So they, they would um have to, since the food tastes like crap, they have to blast it with sugar so it could even, so it could even taste decent enough, you know what I'm saying? And when you get the sugar, you get addicted to it and you get increased carbs and that's how the cycle kind of progresses, you know? So 
uh, stick stick sticking on um, with different herbs. Um, there's foods that's high in selenium. There's different foods that's high in different mi minerals that you need. Like uh, one example is an apple. An apple has arsenic. Arsenic is an, a, min a mineral that you need. Um, again, when you when you pick your foods, make sure you watch that glycemic index because the key of this is you don't want to spike your blood your, your blood your blood sugar levels. You know, you want different herbs that can regulate blood sugar. Like uh, like I said, like the dark cacao. Also, um, oregano stuff like that when you're cooking. Um, and cooking with coconut oil, you know, or um, you look you look in the Bible, you know, you hear a lot of stuff about like eating butter and egg and and, 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 and these things would be like, what butter? That's all, all these fats. But you got to think about it like back then, um, the, the men, the men, what they were eating, like America, you could have food like 24 seven, you know, in, in most, in most societies, this wasn't all, it wasn't always like that. We could just eat any time you want. You know, you're overworking your body. Like they have these things that eat six meals a day to get bigger and all that kind of stuff. You're not supposed to really be doing that. You kind of got to eat like how we used to eat when we was back with David and all that, you know? Um, that's what the body is, is, is designed for. The body's not designed to be eating like six meals a day and shit like that. That's how come these diseases that, that we're dying of, our people are dying of, is like king-like diseases. You know, you think about a high blood pressure and, and obesity. It's like, you got those are like royal type diseases because back in the, you know, the 1800s, 1900s, there's no way you could get that shit because food wasn't so readily available, you know what I mean? So, um, let's see. So that's different herbs, there's, there's, there's different fats. You know, try to get um, avocado in there. I try to eat an avocado at least once a day because it it's, um, has monosaturated fats. I've also been putting mayonnaise on a lot of stuff I eat because I want the saturated fat. I'm um, using coconut oil. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna um, consume coconut oil, the best way to do it is raw. You know, I kind of just take like a spoon a day sometimes or you know, try to avoid frying because again, when you fry, you kind of oxidize the oil and you know, the best kind of stuff is kind of do is kind of bake stuff. Um, or like I said, with the red meat. Now, oh, a thing about that, um, Whole Foods. Whole Foods will have, I think they, they, they get their own organic grass-fed beef from um, Texas. I, I don't I don't go to Whole Foods for my grass-fed beef. I go to a place called Fairware because the beef there is from Uruguay, you know? So it's, it's one thing to have it grass-fed and it's another thing to have it grass-finished. And I also want to mention there's different levels to this thing of um, like how you treat your diet. To me, honestly, brothers, it's fun, man. I love learning new things and, and applying it, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's easy for me to drop something and take something out of my diet. Like the, the last the last uh, show I did, I mentioned that I ate oatmeal, which I, I, I eat it seldom, but I also found out that oatmeal, rye, um, all these different grains that have gluten in it. And what gluten is, is a protein, right? And um, your body, can't break down remember it's, it's transmugetic when you when, when that when that protein goes through your small intestine because the way it works is your food your food travels to your, your your small intestines and and you have something on it called villi's and villi's kind of take out the nutrients that it needs from the different foods that you eat now stuff like gluten your body is so like it's like it's so um clunked up and and and, and fucked up that the villi can't grab it and and, and take it and it just slowly fucks up your body, um, your, your digestive tract. And that's how you have like bad uh, gut diseases. And the key to your health really is your gut. So I kind of cut out the oats meat personally. That's how, you know, I kind of found out that that's how you get the belly as well. So I, I'm not really dealing with any um, oats and grains. Again, there's different levels to it. So, I mean, this, the way I eat, it might be very hard for a brother, but i kind of been doing this for years of just slowly taking stuff and, 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 and putting stuff in. And um, I hope I, I hope I touched on enough uh, key important herbs. I'm, there's there's tons more out there, you know. And the reason I, I mentioned mainly food is because um, there's different supplements I could tell you about, like krill oil, uh, baron, and, and all these different supplements. But I mean personally, I don't deal with supplements because uh, the, the thing about supplements is it's synthetic. You know what I mean? So all right. So example, if you take a vitamin A supplement, you could overdose. It could become toxic. But if you get your vitamin A from let's say carrots or beets your body will take what it needs and then get rid of the rest. With supplements, your body can't do that with supplements. Like I was taking a wheatgrass supplement, my body, I, I, I fucked my head up, you know? Your body can't regulate supplements. So when, when I'm gonna, when I, when, I'm, when I do these different shows and continue on law willing and bring out these different herbs, I'm only gonna suggest food, you know? I'm not gonna tell any brother to go to supplements. I mean, if that's, if that's the thing, you could do that. But I avoid all kinds of supplements. Um, I just try to get everything from food. Also, to, um, uh, in response to one more comment, eating a ketogenic diet, will you bulk up? Yes, you can bulk on a ketogenic diet, but that, remember, brothers, that's all cosmetic, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even recommend getting big fast, you know what I mean? Like, 
I, I was I was I used to have that mindset, but after you know some some uh, information, it's it's it, you're doing more harm than good. You know the the, the thing you want to really do is uh again intermediate fasting and working out on an empty stomach. I mean that's a whole topic in itself, but when I explain that in a in a, in a separate show, you'll see that actually what you want to do is um regenerate muscle tissue and not. I'll go into it, but basically when you you know you you do your intermittent fast and you exercise while fasted, you could repair muscle tissue. Um, so well, when I get in that in the next show, and um, yeah, consume those omega threes. Um, try to get a good balance of omega three to six. Stay away from a lot of oils because oils um, is mostly um, omega six, yes, but they oxidize very easy. Try to get your omega sixes uh, from nuts and seeds. You know, again, wal uh, walnuts, cashews, almonds stuff like that and definitely try to incorporate fish at least twice a week into your diet to get omega-3 you need that epa and dha to um to help your brain out to slowly transition from all that hard high carb diet that esau pretty much had us on from the jump um yeah so i hope i hope i hope um i i, I know there's a way more in my head and i'm probably gonna like realize it like when the video's finished but again same process brothers leave comments Brothers, I have my numbers. Um, you can hit me up. I love talking about this. And um, hey, let's 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 keep being our own healers, man. So um, I hope that was informative. Hope those those different herbs could um, help you out. And remember, um, get that EPA and DHA, all right, to, to help out the, the the brain. Oh shit! How could I forget this herb? Cayenne pepper also. So lemon and cayenne pepper, definitely because what lemon does is um alkaline alkaline. Lemon water is alkaline and then the cayenne pepper helps out your bloodstream, you know, with the heat. And um, yeah, again, when not when low when we continue, I'll I'll do different herbs and um anybody that has any information, any question, I'll I'll low one through the spirit help you out. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Shimyao Shai, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and uh Shalom.